Today's episode is all about the new macOS Catalina update and what you should do before updating. Roll the intro! macOS Catalina is a very big update with around right about 8 to 10 gigabytes um, and with it comes very many features. This video is not about every single new feature in detail but uh, about the things I find practical and I like about the new update and about I think the main advantage uh, of updating the new feature where you can use your iPad as a second display. But firstly, what are the smaller things? One thing I really like is the new uh, gallery feature in the notes app where you can view your notes not just listed below each other but way bigger with a pre preview so you can find them way easier. I use it on my Mac and it works great and I just uh, see that I can find uh, way faster what I need. The second feature fits perfectly to iOS 13 and that's the Reminders app. Uh, that's now way better than before. I uh, used it never before so because I, I thought uh, why should I use it? I just use my calendar but now it's uh, way better than before and you can just uh, type in what you have to do and as soon as you uh, tap the little um, done icon it is deleted so you only see the ones that you have to do and yeah I think that's uh, really useful especially uh, with the family feature so uh, if a lot of people or a few people in your family uh, have Macs or iPhones as well. Um, you just can share your things you have to do and everyone can see it in your family. And the other thing I use often is the um, folder function. So I make different folders uh, in which I put uh, different reminders so they're way better structured. And these folders can be colored. One next relatively big update is iTunes or yeah, there is no iTunes anymore. And you think, uh, what? Apple without iTunes? How does it work? And there are three things, no, four things you have to uh, keep in mind. Because the first one is there are way more apps than before. So you don't have iTunes, but you have Apple Music or Music, uh, Podcasts and Apple TV. And so you can uh, just click on the one you want to use. For example, if you want to uh, see a Apple TV film on your uh, Mac, you don't have to go into iTunes and look for this film. It, it was very messy before, but you can just have a look at the Apple TV app, click on it and watch your film. And then there's uh, the normal music app, which is uh, way better than before because you can just uh, it's yeah it's just more organized um, and the third one is podcasts which which I really like because I hear a lot of podcasts for example the Maddie and Pete show from uh, Maddie Apoya and Peter McKinnon or the MKBHD podcast which is uh, called Waveform and yeah now I can uh, listen to them very easily on my Mac as well. And if you're wondering uh, where should I put all my uh, data from my iPhone or iPad if I uh, connect it to my Mac, because uh, before you just have to plug it in into your Mac and then go into iTunes and uh, save all your data, but now everything is way more uh, logical because it's just in the Finder, and I think that's the better way to do it because I mean you'll save files and so you would you choose a file system won't you so the finder is way better than before with backuping your phone and the main feature of macOS Catalina as I think is sidecar a feature where you can use your iPad 
as a second screen for your uh, MacBook. So for example, if you're traveling uh, with an iPad and your 13 in inch MacBook Pro, you can just pair them uh, via uh, AirDrop, so Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi, and you can use it as a second screen. So for example, uh, you can have your timeline if you, uh, you're making a video on the go, uh, in, on a vacation or so, uh, you can have your timeline on your iPad and have a bigger, a bigger viewer on your uh, MacBook so that you can edit way better than before. And I think that's really the main advantage of this update if you have an iPad that's compatible because uh, watch out, I think 2015 MacBooks and before uh, don't work with this, uh, so only the ones who have USB-C and uh, I think only the iPads where you can use your pencil are compatible, um, so where you can use an Apple Pencil. Um, but definitely definitely uh, search for your device if you want to check if you can use it. But um, if you can use it, it's very helpful, I think, uh, because it's so easy. And although it's uh, it's via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and not a cable. It's almost no lag, so you can really don't see any lag. So if you hit play on your MacBook, the second screen, your iPad, will instantly uh, do what you said. So yeah, that's that's very important, I think, if you have a second screen that uh, it's just without lag. And the second feature you can use there is uh, your Apple Pencil. So you can use some image editing uh, programs or some sketch programs and use your Apple Pencil on your uh, iPad and you see what you draw directly on your iPad. But it's uh, connected to your Mac so the uh, files are all on your Mac and that's just very nice I think. Uh, there were some kind of apps before uh, that um, could do this as well, but I think it's just way easier if it's just uh, in macOS uh, integrated. How do you activate it? It's very easy, just uh, turn on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on both your Mac and your iPad, then just put them uh, beside each other and search for the air AirPlay icon uh, on your Mac, so uh, that's a little TV uh, or a little frame with a triangle in it and just click on it and uh, choose your iPad and then it should be connected. Uh, maybe you're wondering why there isn't an AirPlay icon, that's just uh, either there's no iPad uh, in range or you haven't can, uh, haven't uh, turned Bluetooth or Wi-Fi on or you have to go into your settings and uh, go to um, uh, screens and just uh, go to uh, the bottom where it says some kind of uh, AirPlay second monitoring screen thing and you just have to turn it on if it's turned off and then everything should work. If you have any questions just hit me in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. So yeah that's my thoughts about um, Mac OS Catalina. I just think uh, I think everyone should update unless there's one problem that I have unless your uh, your older programs you use uh, aren't compatible. So I for example uh, use Inkscape and yeah, you just use it to design things and do graphic work. And uh, yeah, it's a relatively old app because it's uh, it isn't really updated for Mac. And now I can't use it anymore, so it won't open. There's some kind of of a bin icon on it. Um, Mac OS warned me before, so I knew it, but. Yeah, that's one reason why you probably shouldn't be updating your Mac if you use some kind of pr uh, programs that can't be uh, 
opened. But yeah, if you check this and you have enough storage because it's very big, uh, you should definitely install, I think, and upgrade. And on my Mac, I think I got even uh, two gigabytes back. So if you've got enough storage to install it, you probably should get more storage back than you had before. So if you like this video, please uh, write it in the comments and leave a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, do it now. And I see you next time.